talk a bit about your work actually so uh, how, what exactly do you do i mean if you were to tell this to uh, a lay person uh, what do you do as a as a quantitative researcher what exactly is the kind of work that you do um so i know i'm a quant trader slash quant researcher yeah. okay <laughs> so okay, maybe a bit of uh, both bit of both right so you can yeah tell us about what a quant trader does what a quant researcher does uh yeah if yeah you sure about. um so yeah i already gave a like a brief a <laughs> brief uh introduction or mentioning about the trader like something definition like execution trader or more uh, close to the core research world mm -hmm. um so for for the core so the life cycle of a uh, core trading is we generate ideas and either your own personal ideas or as a team you get some idea trading ideas and then you 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 implement it you program it and then you do back testing and then if you find the performance is good and then you bring it into production and then maybe trade with a little bit of capital and then scale up so so in the whole life cycle um for the researchers they need to be responsible of uh, generating ideas and then um like coding it and then back testing it so it's, it's a bit yeah it's like research work so you you need to bring the ideas you just need to generate the ideas and then bring the idea into production and then maybe you can execute it yourself or you let someone else to execute it yeah because the main responsibility of core researcher is they have to be doing the research of the trading strategies and then for core trader um yeah so core trader i i um i think some find may defined as what maybe who doesn't need to do research yeah because it can be also a trader who is doing also the research. research and maybe like a trader can be like someone um it, yeah there's another thing is that in some fans they have the pm uh portfolio manager who manages their own book and then in some fans maybe that's team p now so that core trader can also um like manager the uh book, yeah, risk yeah. manager the book, yeah watch risk essentially yeah and if it's a contract researcher perhaps yeah really depends on how <laughs> each fans uh define their own titles but yeah and the professor maybe they don't need to watch risk yeah so um yeah but generally i i, I I told you about the life cycle of uh, the concrete strategies. So there need to be someone working on yeah. each step or yeah, all steps yeah. or some of the steps. Sure, sure. So what exactly do you enjoy in your work? Uh, is it the idea that you generate, the trading strategy, the money that you make, uh, the impact, the you know, or it could be all of these, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoy it very much. Um, it's a kind of a research. It's a similar to the academic research that you are researching on, on something, a question, some a, a complicated system, and there's no obvious questions and uh, answers. I mean, right. there's no obvious answers, and then you research, research on it and solve the puzzles, try to get something. Right. Getting a good strategy. And I also enjoy the money making part because that's like the impact. It's a, it's a very direct um, feedback to how good this strategy is. Yeah, so the performance of it. So I enjoy. Uh, yeah, I enjoy actually still the same thing as what I did while I was doing the academic research. Research on something, a question, and then bring it into. Now it's like production, but before it's like make it a, a, a model, yeah, right. something. I, I don't like to do the random research and never reach something. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's just like I, my, my personal passion is I research on things. So I want to create a product, something, yeah, that can be, can be used or can be shared and can 
have impact. And then the impact of before could be some academic research impact, and now it's sort of this training strategies impact on uh, trading, on making money, making good PR. Right? Okay, so I enjoy the industry kind of logical things. <laughs> and it's the best of both worlds, right? You get to work on research like in academia, but you get paid more than academia, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. I I think I don't know how good the academic is paid now. Well, I would have so heard it's not that great, <laughs> right? So yourself is do, you're doing. I'm in the industry. I'm in the industry. Um, yeah, but what I've heard from people is that uh, people um, have decided to leave academia to join the industry because, okay, there are many other reasons, but one of the main reasons is to make more money and uh, yes. make quick money. In academia, as in you have to wait for let's say ten years to you know become a professor, a full professor, uh, or even longer. Whereas in, in industry, you can grow really fast. But do they consider working in some, uh, you know, like the Google or Facebook, those kind of uh, labs? Yeah. Then do they consider that's also academic or they think that's industry? Well, I think it's in the industry, right? Uh, okay. Because, uh, you know, you're working for a profit-making company. Universities are not... Uh, you know, profit-making companies, they do not have a balance sheet. Uh, they're not publicly traded uh, companies, yeah. where, <laughs> right? So in most uh, universities, you don't even have a CEO there, unlike uh, in industry, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's also yeah, something good side effect <laughs> that I got after I joined the finance. Yeah. Yeah. But I think academic is important. Maybe there could be some way to further improve the ecosystem. So for the academic researchers, they yeah. could yeah right. make more money. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to think about it. I, I don't have all this answer. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe uh, one more question on your uh, work, actually. Um, so what kind of algorithms do you use? Are these more statistical algorithm or uh, the machine learning AI algorithms? Um, or uh, yeah, other kind of algorithms like simulations, uh, you know, Monte Carlo simulations. So can you talk a bit about what sort of algorithms you use uh, in quantitative trading? Uh, so just now you mentioned about multi-color simulation or machine yeah. learning. Yeah. Um, so for, for what I'm doing or for quant fields, there are um, two kinds of uh, quant fields. One is P quant, one is Q quant. Mm -hmm. So P is like using uh, P is represents probability. So it's like trading strategies are like P quant or like trading uh, signals strategy side. And then the Q is like option pricing. Yeah, sorry, I need to mention that I'm working on auction only. So okay. for auction, they are like P quant and Q quant, yeah, kind of a categorization. And so multi color simulation is an important pricing method for Q quant area because they need to price the options. Mm -hmm. And then for pricing, there are also analytics. So some models like black shows models yeah. or using PD and then to price different kind of auction products. Right. And for trading strategy size, so the P quant side, uh, P quant side um, yeah, can be any kind of a method that people think about to, to create their trading strategies. I know someone who are using also a kind of simulation called agent-based modeling. So okay. they simulate Okay. Yeah, we simulate the market participant and agent and let them interact and then simulate the trading environment scenarios and then use that to predict the market. So that's someone using that. So it can, yeah, can be a lot of the different things. But do you have the flexibility to choose any algorithm or uh, you do have some restrictions in place as to what you can choose and what you cannot 
choose or is it at the discretion of the trader or the researcher in this case uh, to choose which algorithm he or she wants to use? That's a very good question. So if, if it's a trading firm, um, I, um, basically anything you could test and then you can show the performance to the management level and see if they would like to allocate capital. Um, but it's not so straight uh, on which method, which algorithm you call to use. But if it's bank, investment bank, um, there could be some uh, constraints because um, the like audit and the model validation. The so yeah. yeah, they need to understand what model you are using. So um, before I left the banking, <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember the one problem was that they need to understand what your model is. So for machine learning models, uh, um, it's like a black box. Yeah. So it's very hard to explain what's going on there. So that could be could cause some problem. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know how it is. Wait. So yeah. do you have to wait for the validation team to tell you that this algorithm can be used? Uh, and only then you go ahead in executing your trade. Uh, does that yeah, help? Yeah. Because, because it's a time taking process, right? And yes. you would miss the signal, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's a that's a that's a problem of the in time cost in the process of working in the banks. But working at the buy side could yeah. be less um, restricted yeah. yeah okay okay um okay maybe for our viewers can you explain what the basic difference between a buy sell trading desk and a sell side trading desk um so sell side is uh basically sell <laughs> buy side is buy <laughs> okay. so that's that's not why the name so sell side um for option so not only at, in the banks, but also hedge fund or trading firm, they can also have OTC trading and selling the options, selling the products to their clients. But I think normally we talk about sell side, we talk about those banks. Yeah, even though the buy side, they can also sell things, sell OTC products. Okay. I'm not sure if that's what people think about sell, sell side. When they talk about sell side, they normally perhaps think about banks. So, um, so for, for selling options, the, the importance is about um, having clients, like, right. you know, so clients like to buy something from you and then you, for option also, you, you could price your products. You provide different kinds of products uh, meeting the client's needs. Right. Yeah. And you know how to price it, and you know how to manage the risk. Yeah, right. so you sell to your clients, and with the fa fair price that you, you calculated from your models, mm -hmm. and also, yeah, applying the spread, of course, as, as well. And then you know how, mu how much risk you are taking, and you know how to manage the risk. Okay. And then for buy side, if you trade through, through the exchange, or for crypto, you can trade through the uh, Dex, so DeFi exchange, yeah. or like a DeFi product for option. Yeah. There is DeFi option board. Mm -hmm. um, so you buy those kind of uh, uh, options or futures or the financial derivatives uh, or spots from different kind of resources. And these you are have hedge your funds, own... right? Are these all hedge funds uh, or? So um, can we hedge the fund or trading shop? Yeah, like proper trading shop. Okay. You can trade with your own money, or you had you are hedge fund, you manage some your clients' okay. money. On, yeah, you charge also management fee. Okay. Question on the 